Hey guys, 7430 Premium here with a 6.8 liter power tech in it. Um, I wanted to explain to you what's going on with this. I know somebody will say I'm talking too much, but I think I need to give the viewers a frame of reference as to what's actually going on so they didn't get, because we didn't show anything on the disassembly. I was really busy. So many projects going on, uh, but I want to video uh what happened to this tractor and what caused it and the reassembly so story behind this tractor got called out to it said that the guy had run it all night before one of the operators everything was fine started it the next morning started knocking as soon as he started it started knocking wasn't knocking wasn't doing anything the night before and um Went out there, I checked the oil, everything like that. Didn't really see any evidence of silver or any metal in the oil. So then I did a relative compression. On a relative compression test with, uh, with the Texas unit, it does the same thing a service advisor would do, is it'll crank the engine for a lot of amount of time. And what, it, what it'll do is it'll crank on it until it tells you to let off the key. And then it comes up with a graph on all six cylinders that tells you the, basically the percentage that cylinder is at. So I did the test like two or three times and it came back with the same results. Um, number one was 100%, number two was at like 60%, number three was 20%, and the rest of the cylinders were at 100%, four, five, and six. So anyways, uh, I called them and said, hey, you got, a, you got an internal problem here. It's either dropped a valve or, I mean, something like that is going on with it. And there was no ECU codes. None. And um, so they drug it up here. We started tearing it apart and got over to the turbo actuator. And I'm going to show you the turbo. Uh, this has a variable geometry turbo. This is a interim tier three engine. What that means, if it's an interim tier three engine, that means it has an EGR and an EGR cooler, VGT. There's no DPF, there's no DEF, none of that. It's just basically an EG yard engine is what it is, tier three interim. Okay, so I get over to the turbo that, as you can see, the turbo has been taken apart. Uh, this actuator, see how that actuator is froze up, won't move? So when I got to the turbo, when it was assembled on the engine, I noticed that the heim joint, this heim joint is supposed to go right there like that and control this mechanism here for the VGT. That mechanism there controls this unison ring. This unison ring sets on the VGT veins here. These are not the veins. The veins are actually underneath, down in here. Let me get a light. You can't see them because they're gone. <laughs> and I'll explain why. Um, so anyways, I noticed that Heim joint was off and that I couldn't move that. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. Why wasn't it throwing a code for that? So anyways, uh, we continued on with the disassembly, and I got the head off, and I noticed that, well, I actually I got the exhaust manifold off of it. Once I got the exhaust manifold off, there, these, the 7830s, the 30 series had these little, I'm not really sure, just pieces of pipe. They, they go in the, well, I got one sitting in there right now, I'll show you. But they had this piece of pipe sitting in the, in the head and then the manifold slides over the pipe and bolts down here okay so just a little extension pipe well number two and three there was i mean big chunks chunks of metal like that and i, I did the, the metal wasn't really looking familiar to me as like part of a piston or part of a valve it was kind of a little bit odd you know so anyways got the head off of it and uh i've already got the new rods on the new pistons i'll show you here let me find number there's number three right there so um let's get the light out i know my cave here it, it's really not as bad as it seems on this camera i get a lot of grief about that but uh these cameras don't pick up uh, a lower light situation very well anyways but there's there's all the material in number three piston as you can see I got the liners out of it too. We got the block deck cleaned up. Um, there's number two. Number two wasn't too bad. It wasn't near as bad as number three was. We we're basically replacing two holes on it. And what happened on it is over here. 
They're supposed to be here, but they're, they're gone, and that's what went through. Um, and the impeller side of the turbo, there's not a thing wrong with it. The exhaust side, though, look look at the. So, I called a buddy of mine. He he. I work on a lot of John Deere stuff, but he works on probably twice as much John Deere stuff. He was the next John Deere uh, dealer mechanic, and he's a very good mechanic. Uh, and he knows a lot about John Deere. When I get stumped and on something, I call Pete. And Pete, me and me and Pete are both, you know, we, me and him will talk it over, and we'll usually figure it out between the two of us. But uh, I called Pete, and I said, hey, what's, you ever seen one of these? I explained him what was going on, and he said one time before, and he explained the exact same scenario. He said it was when the guy shut it off that night, and he come back and started it the next morning is what happened. I said, well, this one did exactly the same thing. And he said, you know, that turbo's mounted up here above that exhaust. And he says, if, the, if he shut it off that night, he says that VGT closed or opened or whatever, it did. He says, and them veins broke, and they fell down in that manifold, and they rattled back down through there. He says, one of them probably landed right up on top of the valves or two, of, you know, and fell down on top. And when he started it the next morning, that material was laying on top, and bang, 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 and, then, and so on and so forth. But... Jim over in PA, he worked for Cummins for years, and he's seen some on ISXs. Uh, he's seen some of those VGTs blow up and go back through the exhaust, back on top of the pistons. He says it's, it can happen. So uh, this, this is the first one I've ever seen. So anyway, um, now that we know what happened, we got, I'll show you, I got, so I got two new liners, two new pistons, rings. Uh, these pistons come in, packs that i don't i just don't trust them uh i don't trust some chinese guy to put the thing together correctly and and stagger the ring gaps correctly so i always pull the the pistons out and make sure my rings are gapped properly and make sure they're orientated and you know uh the correct way and then uh i got my these these uh the john deere pistons are pretty simple like it says front on the rod and it says front on the piston so it's pretty hard to screw that up and uh, got that all on there ready to go as far as that goes we got the block cleaned up i got a brand new turbo sitting right here i got to get in the book the liner o-rings go in the block and the old ones had the black o-rings on the bottom and the orange ones on top and then they gave me white and black and i've run into this before and i'm pretty sure the white's going on top and the black's going on the bottom but uh so I got a new turbo, I got another head in here. The head, to be honest with you, I think could have been fixed pretty easy. These guys are in a huge hurry for this thing and they didn't want to wait on the machine shop and they said, get another head for it, slam it on there, let's go. The problem I had was this whole COVID-19 thing and all our manufacturing now in the United States has gone to China is the gasket kit was on back order for the head, the head kit. Couldn't get a head gasket kit for it. So I had to get an aftermarket one, and it's supposed to be in this morning. Actually, Blake's waiting in town to maybe pick it up when it shows up and boogie down here with it so we can put things together. I really like to get this thing running, even though we, have to, we might have to burn the midnight oil tonight to get it running, but I really want to get her going tonight. So anyways, uh, got two new injectors too. I got an injector for each hole just in case any of that material uh, got up against the bottom of the... Uh, that you know on the tips of the injectors so we're going to strip this head take it all off that one put it on this one anyways let's get to work all right guys um so the first thing we're going to do here is is uh stick the liner in without stick a liner in we got the counter boards real clean stick the liner in without the o-rings the o-rings actually going in the block on this you know some some diesel engines work on the liners or rings will actually go on the liner but you actually on this John Deere liner John Deere likes to use a packing o-ring here which would be kind of a square cut cut looking o-ring and then they'll use two different colored o-rings down in the block so let's start off with number two cylinder and what you should do on a John Deere pretty much any liner really you should be able to take that liner without o-rings on it 
and spin that liner on the board. And if it don't turn and does not spin, then you need to really polish this. Take some emery cloth or you can even take a ball hone a little bit and go down in the 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 liner bore or the o-ring seat and clean that up a little bit don't clean it too much and get too carried away but i mean you'd have to really polish on that thing a lot to make it let's just see what this thing reads without any hold downs on it what i mean by hold downs is a clamp This is a liner protrusion gauge. I've showed this in numerous videos. Let's get it get it on the flat part of the deck there and let's zero it. What a guy could do if he wants to be really particular with it is loosen the Allen set here. Let me get the camera over here, maybe where you could see what we're doing here. If you wanted to get really OCD about stuff, you could get your set your dial at the top. All right, we're zero there. Let's move it over to our liner flange, and we got four thousandths there. Well, I'd say three thousandths, because we're one thousandths there on that. We're gonna get a hold down. We're gonna get a couple bolts and some washers and sense this down. But I'm just kind of curious, just kind of doing a little experiment to myself to see what it reads, you know, before and after clamping it down if it's pretty much the same measurement. There we are at about three thousandths again. I'm having trouble. I gotta get, I gotta get over here like this. Three thousandths. It looks like we're going to be three thousandths over. I'm going to go get some bolts and some washers and clamp this thing down. All right, we got a couple bolts in the here, spaced 180 degrees out, and uh, torque them down to 50 foot pounds, and then let's run our liner protrusion gauge over it now and see what it says. Same thing. Three thousandths. Okay. Try to get it over here around that washer. Man, that magnet is stiff on that camera mount. Yeah, we're meeting about positive one on the dial indicator, so it's going to four. It's actually about one and a half. So we're we're about at three there too. I gotta walk over to the other side of the tractor so I can read that correctly. I can't see nothing from there. I got a feeling it's gonna be just fine. My buddy Pete says, You do way more than I do. So what do you mean? He says, I took my fingernail over there and I say, it's good enough. And I throw the head gasket on it. Okay, so this, this liner's fine. Basically, I'm going to do the same thing to the next one. I'm going to check it and uh, throw the liner in there, check it without the... Check it without it and then sense these down and check it with them on there and then 
we'll uh, throw the head gasket on it and uh, well we'll get to put the piston in it I'll show that to you all right guys I guess my o-rings here black one goes in the bottom white o-ring goes in the top got some non dish soap lube the o-ring up You're stuck down here in the bottom groove. See if I'm good enough to get it in there with one hand. Camera's kind of in the way. But I'm trying to give you guys some kind of view here. Uh oh, and it fell her out. Gotta have both hands in there, but they can be kind of a let's see where I'm at here. Come on, get in there. He's kinking up on one spot on me here. Being on the laundry. There we go. Okay. Now the white O-ring. This white O-ring is kind of a soft thing. This is the one here that if you put oil on it, it'll really want to swell up on you. The chemistry of the oil doesn't agree with the, with the O-ring, and then it'll swell up on you. Okay, darn it. I had her just about in there and it flopped out of there on me. One thing beneficial about the liner orange going on the on the liner is it's a lot easier to put them on. Alright, so we got those in. What I do is I've already got my packing on my actual liners, the green square cut one. Then I take some a little bit of soap here and I I smear it around around here on my liner and then I put my liner in okay and then I got my rubber mallet here She's seated. She's looking good. Okay. Do the same thing to the next one. A little bit of dish soap here. The service manual tells you not to use hand cleaner soap. You know, I've used dish soap before to clean my hands with, but I've used this before. I've used Vaseline, but Vaseline technically is a it's a it's a petroleum product as well, so I don't know if a guy should <laughs> I don't know, I've used it and I've never had any problems, but I remember I, when I was a young mechanic I did use engine fifteen forty on on them and then I don't know the phone rang or something in between when I put the lube on the the o-rings and when i actually put them in and it did it it swelled them up and i couldn't get the liners in it it pinched one of them when i i felt it too when i put it in and i had to pull the liner back out of there and check it and sure as hell it it pinched it and broke it so 
I decided but way back then, that was years ago, that putting engine oil on them was not the thing to do. But And you know, you read some of the old, old Detroit manuals and stuff, and they tell you to put engine oil on them. They do, right in the directions. They tell you to put engine oil on them. So I don't know if they've changed or... Uh, materials on these o-rings in the later years to where they weren't acceptable for you know uh, the oil wasn't gonna work on them anymore or what but i think i read an old cat manual one time that said that told you to use see that that one went right in All right. You know, I probably should get a block of wood is what I really need. It'd be a lot better. like using about a block of wood is I did a Perkins on time and the the block of wood flaked on me and then it fell down in the counter bore and then I had to pull the liner back out because it had the protrusion sticking up too high because the wood chip fell down in the the counter bore on me I think we did pretty good on this one though Well, uh, I'm going to clean my rod journals up real good on my crankshaft and then get some assembly lube on the bearings, on the rods, and uh, we'll stick the pistons in there. Okay, use new snap rings, new, new wrist pins, make sure that the rod, okay, the, the piston says front on the skirt, and then the rod on one side says front as well, make sure those match. And on the on the snap rings, it tells you there that they want the they want that snap ring. Let me get the light over here where you can see. But that snap ring will be at the six o'clock facing down position. Now these snap rings have kind of a, a smooth side on the edge here and then a sharp side and you can you go you can see it if you look really close but just take your finger and and go across the top of it like that that's the smooth side this is the sharp side you can feel it the sharp side goes away from the wrist pin goes out towards the skirt and then this the smoother side goes towards the wrist pin on those okay so that's snap ring orientation for that stuff all right guys camera up there in a spot where so we've got front to front we've got we've dipped our piston and new oil here I guess I better make sure I'm not getting something on the bottom shouldn't be I think it's the ring right here make sure I don't break a ring yeah that's not sometimes a concentric Concentric, uh, yeah, something ain't quite right there. 
that's what's going on. The ring is not going all the way in. Sometimes a concentric snap ring compressor works. A little better than this style of ring compressor. There it goes. Okay. Just don't want to get too forceful with it. Nice and easy is the key. So now what I'll do is I'll lube my necking rod cap up. I'll get underneath the engine. And then I'll pull the rod down on top of the crank journal. And then put the rod cap on. And... Uh, John Deere service manual he says to use new rod bolts, never reuse rod bolts. I never do anyway on any engine. I had one engine one time that I reused rod bolts on when I was a young guy. and yeah, I paid for it. Um, it threw a rod and ruined the engine and I ended up finding a block for the guy and doing the whole job and bought the parts and lost my butt on it. But it was another hard lesson learned. And then the book also says, do not reuse the head bolts, which I don't know about the head bolt thing. I mean, Cummins, I'm going to use new head bolts anyway, because that's what the book says. But Cummins, you know, I mean, they give you a thread gauge and you measure them. And if they pass the thread gauge and the length and all that stuff, then you put them back on there. And, and it's the same torque method. It's a torque, uh, torque angle, torque turn. I mean, they're not torque to yield, so I don't really understand what their whole... On the head bolts, the head bolts, uh, I mean, the worst case scenario on a head bolt, if you do get it wrong, it's going to leak on you. And I mean, it could potentially cause you a lot of problems, but I, not as near as many problems as a rod bolt coming loose. A rod bolt coming loose is a, a huge catastrophe. It usually windows the block when those come loose, and it ruins everything.